Hello everyone, we are going to use all the recent release open source AI models to create an AI talking avatar workflow. As you've seen in the recent updates, I uploaded some YouTube shorts where I tried out a demo of a talking avatar. And there is one more upcoming feature, the singing avatar. We're able to use Framepack as the generation tool for the video and bring it to life by making a talking avatar or a singing avatar for an AI character. As we've played around with before in some tutorials, we tried out the first version of Framepack and also the latest update, Framepack F1. Now we've played around with it in the web UI on the Framepack GitHub project and also in Comfy UI where we can use Comfy UI to generate an image in Flux or any image generation tool and then bring that into a longer length video using Framepack. This is a really good scenario for using Framepack because when we're creating a talking avatar, we at least require some length, you know, a certain duration for your videos to run smoothly, at least like, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or even two minutes for a speech to feel complete. So Framepack fits perfectly here. I've tried out some examples and I want to show you guys before we start our tutorial. First of all, let's check out the talking avatar first and then we'll see the singing avatar as well. That will be covered in this coming video too for the singing avatar. Politics is just TikTok for old people. Endless drama, everyone's performing, and no matter how much you scroll, it never gets better. You know, I was going to say something clever to catch your attention, but then I saw that smile of yours. And this demo is going to be the upcoming one using Framepack as the base to create the video. And this is for the singing avatar, which I see is currently trending in some YouTube shorts, videos that make AI characters sing instead of just talk. So check this out too, and then we'll start our tutorial. The world moves fast, but I'm stuck in slow motion. Every glance from you feels like a sweet explosion. So, as you can see, those expressions can go through the whole video and also the mouth lip syncing, which is pretty easy to do right now with open source AI models. So we're going to try out those recently published, uh, released AI models um, and combine them together within this workflow to make the talking avatar happen. So the first thing is the talking avatar. This is the basic version of this workflow. Now, why am I creating a basic version and an advanced version for some workflows? Because sometimes, you know, there's a lot of advanced stuff going on and I see a lot of beginners trying to start with Comfy UI recently. I'll be creating a basic version to let people get started with something easier to handle. And you'll see that big giant workflows can be overwhelming. They'll feel so complicated and scared to continue using Comfy UI. So, Making a basic workflow like this helps get started. First, we have the Framepack video gen. This is going to use the very normal way of using Framepack. Instead, we're going to use a portrait image. Especially, we need a portrait image just like the examples you saw here. Then, we'll connect that either from your file path or in the Comfy UI uploaded input folder. Connect that into this reroute. So, as I have an image in the file path, then I connect it to here. As these examples, we're going to try out, say, 10 seconds of video length. And then right here, we'll mainly describe how the avatar or the character is going to act and react in the motions. So let's say here, I want the character to just sit in front of the camera. And then I'll cross out some actions here because I just need a talking avatar. So therefore, I'll just need the woman sitting in front of the camera with small body movements or hand movements we need the mouth closed because we don't want the AI video to generate the character constantly talking without actual real sounds related to that. As you know, some AI models will generate, if you type talking, the AI will continue to create the motions of the character's mouth moving, but it's not actually making sense in terms of talking. And then we want the natural motion, steady camera. That's all we need. That's a very simple, basic text prompt. Then the next thing we're going to do is we'll have our output image here and then the output video here. So once we have the output video, we also pass the video from the frame pack output to this group. 
This is the TTS text-to-speech and the lip sync group. Basically, this happens as I've tried with other AI video workflows before, and this time we're using F5TTS as the sound generation here. Now I've generated some text here, so let's say I pick this one for an example. This is coming from DeepSeek where I just generated some funny jokes about politics and then put that as one or two sentences like that. And we'll keep one simple sentence right here. The first thing we want to do is generate the sound and preview the duration first. Now, in here, we can go to the fast group bypass to turn off frame pack in the first moment. And then let's say we'll begin with the audio. First, we run the audio and we'll see how the generation of this audio is going to sound. Also, how many seconds at least we need because I just input 10 seconds. There might be over 10 seconds in this audio, so we might need to adjust. So luckily we've generated an output and this is eight seconds. So that's under the 10 second mark from what I just input in the frame pack sampler. Therefore, I can use frame pack right now to generate with this audio. And let's check out this audio first, see how that sounds. I love election season. It's the only time you'll hear someone say, I'll fix everything. And half the room cheers while the other half rolls their eyes. Now the sample audio here as an input is for voice cloning. As I've put the note mark here, this is the reference voice for voice cloning. Now you will have to input your own voice, whichever voice you have. Just speak under 10 seconds, an audio MP3 that's good enough for sampling. Then the F5TTS will use your input voice as the sampler and generate that using your voice here for the audio preview. Also, it will pass the audio sounds to latent sync 1.5 where I've talked about how to install latent sync before, but then right now it's upgraded to 1.5. Latent sync is different from fantasy talk, which I've talked about before. In previous videos, I discussed fantasy talk from the AI video team. These AI models are used to generate the talking avatar, starting from an image and then bringing it to audio and video together as the latent thing. The difference is that it's able to adopt the existing videos from the input as the lip sync video. So in this case, we're using this more flexibly than using fantasy talk for your AI avatar. So now we'll enable frame pack here since we're satisfied with our audio files here. And then we'll go to the audio files here as we've already input the image for our AI character. And we also have the text prompts for just a steady still camera of the character. And in my case, I like to do an image preview just for preference here for my image. And we'll get started running this and see how that looks. So, as you can see, once I run the image loaded here, it has the character, a woman sitting on stage and speaking in front of the microphone. That's gonna be our AI character in this example. And then it will generate first in frame pack, generate 10 seconds duration, and then pass that frame pack output video for the audio lip syncing. Meanwhile, it's also generating the audio from the F5TTS. Now, F5TTS, we've talked about that a few months ago, is still the most stable, talk-like, voice cloning, feature-enabled, text-to-speech, AI model running locally. I think it's the easiest way to start your voice cloning and text-to-speech anytime in Comfy UI, so we're using this one. So let's wait for the generate result, and we'll come back to see the result. And here we have the generated result. As you can see right here, we have some natural motions, although there's some not fully closed mouths in the whole duration of this generated video. But it's still okay. It's still able to control by the lip syncing. Although there's some mouth open or smile, you see some teeth. Maybe next time we can add the mouth closed text prompt at the front, like here, the first sentence of the text prompt, to make it more stronger to emphasize that we need the character's mouth closed. Not gonna you know, talk and move the mouth without any unstable movement for the mouth. That's the thing we need to concern about. The next step, we have the text to speech. And there we have our talking avatar here. So let's check out the audio and see how that sounds. And we'll see how to make it even better and improve some blurry parts of the video. It's the only time you'll hear someone say, I'll fix everything. And half the room cheers while the other half rolls their eyes. So as you can see, there are some certain periods of durations here where you'll see some blurriness. 
especially the teeth here, that can be fixed using upscaling. And then what I've done is the advanced version where I have more things going on. I use flux text to image. This is also generating this character image. So we've talked about how to use flux gym before and create your own AI character, Laura. So in here, this part, we're going to use that. We're also using Ultra Real Photo V2 for making the realism styles for your image, as well as using Flux Turbo to make a fast draft of the image with low sampling steps. So once we have our first image generated in the first sampling in this group, and let's say we use 15 steps, then once we like that image draft, we can enhance that based on that draft. And then this moves on to the second sampler where we add another 10 steps. We don't need the upscale image for this one because when we pass it to frame pack, there's no need to have a 4K resolution image. It will be resized down anyway to, you know, 1080p or 720p resolutions. So we don't need to spend extra resources to do that. As I'm generating the portrait image in these dimensions and then in the second sampling, I've upscaled that using 1.5x so it will be good enough for generating about 1000 to 2000 pixels width and height for the portrait image. So let's try this one first and we'll see how that looks. The first step, I've labeled all the main groups here. Enable 1, Step 1, Step 2, Step 3, and Step 4. So the other rest of the groups are intersmall groups or subgroups of those four large groups. So we don't need to take care of those. We just have to focus on these four numbers. So the first method we're gonna use is using the image gen, using the character Laura. We'll have the talking avatar using frame pack to generate video, and then we'll use text to speech and lip syncing. Finally, we'll use the upscaler to upscale our video. So we'll disable all the other three first, and we'll focus on creating an image. We'll see that here's how that looks for our character, and let's generate this one and see how that looks. And once we have the image, you'll see, as you can see here, we'll start moving on to the next step, which is enabling the second step, the talking avatar using frame pack to generate video. And then we'll also enable the lip sync. This time, I'll also enable this and I'll show the difference between the normal generation of the lip sync and then after upscaling, the difference in the mouth and how that looks. So in here, after we enable this group, we're going to the text-to-speech. We have to enter whatever we need to talk about here. So let's say I have another joke about politicians, and then we can, for example, uh, connect the output audio for our lip-syncing. So I've put a note here and also the reroute point here. If you're using the F5.5 TTS to generate your audio, it will be displayed in the preview here as well as you having to connect the output audio to this green dot. Otherwise, if you have your own audio sound, you'll use the audio from the path. Then load your file path here and then connect this dot to the red dot here and you'll use your own file path in this way. So there are two optional things for you to work with the lip syncing. So let's say in this part, we're going to use the F5 TTS, then We'll enable this one and we'll connect this dot to the green dot here for the audio output. And then we can ignore the file path here. You can bypass that or just not connect it. Either one works. Then once you have your sound here, that'll be about 10 seconds of audio duration here. Then let's set the total seconds again to 10 seconds here in the frame pack sampler. You have to remember a very important thing. Set your duration, how long that is you should not have shorter durations than your audio. Otherwise, your video won't show the full audio sound length. So, you have to pair with that or make the video longer than the audio. So, in here, let's try with this prompt. And then, going down here, we'll use the input image from the Flux LoRa output. Now, I've set two different outputs from Flux. One is from the Flux LoRa image generation group, and another one is the Flux Ace Plus generation group, as you can see in the previous group here, I got two. One is for using LoRa to generate, and one is using Flux Ace to generate. Because sometimes we have an image, for example, here. You want to mask that clothing outfit and then use your own character's outfit to swap the clothes, swap the face as well. You can, you know, do any image editing that Flux Ace Plus can do. 
So I've labeled as well. The Flux Ace Plus has three LoRa options, portrait subjects, local edit, and mostly will use the portrait. And the subject is good enough to cover most of the editing in this sub scenario. And you guys can check it out. The Flux Ace Plus, how that thing is going to operate. This group is the same group as I've shown in the previous tutorial, but I've just, you know, merged that together with the other AI. So in this, it's like a large group of workflows connecting multi models working together to generate an AI avatar. So we don't need to use Flux Ace in this moment, and we'll just use LoRa. We have the Flux LoRa output connected, and we click Run again. We'll wait for another result for the video generated, and then we'll have the lip sync, and also, lastly, we'll have the video upscale as well. So, in this example, most likely, the text-to-speech will generate first before the frame pack finishes generating the video. So, in the meanwhile, you can preview the audio and see how that sounds here. So let's say we have this much sound and then we can check that out first. So that's 13 seconds. So we have to be aware of that and we might have to change this duration and cancel this this time first. And then after that, we'll have to enter 13 seconds for the total length in the frame pack and then redo this again. So. Always configure stuff when you're working with more advanced setups with more AI and configurations. Always have to go through some numbers and configure. Or you can use the duration in the audio to match with the seconds or the video length in the frame pack here. So let me do this quick edit and we'll have this auto update for the durations as well. So I've updated a little bit here and we've added the audio duration we calculate the milliseconds here by passing out the data of the milliseconds of the TTS duration. We receive that in this get node, and then I do a math expression to round up the milliseconds to seconds formula, and we got the number 13 here. Then we're going to use this as the formula and pass that to the seconds for the video generation length here. So that's how we'll have dynamic numbers, so you don't have to manually set stuff over and over again. Okay, so we got the final result, and after I generate a few more times, I get a better image. We have the result here, so let's check it out first. First, this one is going to be the lip sync without upscaling. Politicians are like weather forecasters. They make a lot of predictions. They're wrong half the time, and somehow they still keep their jobs. Okay, so as you can see, there's still some blurriness after using the lip sync. And even though we're using the latent sync 1.5 nodes, this version is improved a lot compared to the first version of latent sync. And then I added the lip expressions higher than the default values here so that you have more dramatic changes of the lips to demonstrate how that movement is during this time. I see that there's some quick movement here. For example, between the motions of the mouth, you'll have some unclear edges of the lips. And the facial expressions here, where we can do using another upscaler, normally we use this Ultimate SD upscaler, a very good old way. And this is an effective way to do it. And then, right here, we've upscaled two times the size. Basically, we use SDXL to just make the speed of the generation faster. It's still able to handle the quality using SDXL, like the way that it shows right here. And let's check out this result. Politicians are like weather forecasters. They make a lot of predictions. They're wrong half the time, and somehow they still keep their jobs. So the lips, after upscaling, are more sharper, and then the whole face, I should say the overall of the image on each frame, is going to be sharper. Not overly dramatically different colors and things, because I set the denoise very low to keep this as close to the source video as possible. And as you can see, when we put it together closer, you'll see the difference here, where you see the face is obviously more clear and clean with those colors. And those mouth motions are able to be seen more clearly than by default that the latent sync generates. So that's how we can do the talking avatar like that. And it's well able to generate long videos using frame pack. That's the advantage of using frame pack. And the next thing we'll try out is how to animate the character singing. I saw that a lot of YouTube shorts recently trending are AI avatars, and of course they're using some paid AI tools to make it high resolution and smoother animations. But then we'll try to use open source models and see how we can do our best. 
and make similar results with that. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.